Hey you guys, welcome to today's video. All right, so in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about the broker interactive brokers, and I wanted to generally go over their account structures and basically all the little nitty gritty things that you need to essentially know if you plan to open an account with this broker. And also just kind of talking about some of my own experiences using their platform for the last about year and a half or so. And that's it, so let's get to it right now. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about their account types, their account fees, monthly fees and minimums. We'll talk about the trading capabilities of this broker interest rates for margin loans, interest rates for cash balances, and then I'll give you a rundown at the end. By the way, guys, this is not a paid promotion. I just decided to make this video because it fits the context of my channel and I enjoy helping people out there to understand this information a little bit clearer because if you're a person who doesn't have a lot of experience with this stuff and you go on their website, you're going to be absolutely appalled by the amount of words you have to read to understand what it is you're doing here. So I'm going to try and simplify it a little bit for you. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got plenty of other videos in related to trading and tutorials. So this broker is one of the biggest in the world. They were founded in 1978 42 years ago right now they're probably one of the biggest retail brokerage firms as well as uh, clearing firms for some institutions as well so on this page right here configuring your account you'll be able to see certain specifics about the different accounts if they're individual accounts or joint accounts ira and if you scroll down you'll see basically what kind of accounts are available depending on your situation i'll just give you an example here Look at money manager accounts, account description. A new separate client account is open for any client for whom a money manager manages money. So the accounts are gonna differ depending on what kind of account or what kind of person you are. So logically, if you're just an individual, you don't need to read through all that stuff. You just need to look at the basics up here. So let's start off and talk about account fees and account minimums because the majority of people wanna know what are the fees associated with this account and basically what's the cost of doing business in this account, okay? And why would I open an account with this broker to begin with versus another broker? From my own perspective, I'm from Canada, and in Canada, there's actually no other broker that compares with interactive brokers in terms of their low cost trading, their low margins, and their ability to trade in the US equities market options, futures, and stocks. If you go to other brokerages, they do offer it, but the commissions are about 20 times as high. Client account minimum. If the commissions generated in a calendar month exceed the minimum stated in the table below, or account has net liquidation value of more than 100,000, you don't pay any account minimums whatsoever. So let's go now and look at monthly activity fee for not meeting monthly minimum. So let's you have a small account you will be charged a monthly fee let's take a look at what it is okay so the first thing you need to know is that interactive brokers has this two thousand dollar thing the minimum balance to use margin with interactive brokers two thousand dollars us so if you don't have two thousand dollars us in your account you can't use margin to trade stocks and you can't trade futures so what they actually have going on with this is that if your account is actually below two thousand dollars you actually pay a slightly higher fee so in this case you can see Monthly activity fee equals zero if your monthly commissions are equal or greater to $20. However, if you don't do any commissions, they're gonna charge you a $20 a month fee minus any commissions you do. So if you do $11 in commissions, your activity fee is gonna be $9. You can see that right there as I'm looking at it. If your account is over $2,000 balance, then the activity fee is only $10 minus any commissions you do. And by the way, guys, this does not include market data subscriptions. So if you are subscribed to market data and you are paying $15 a month, but you didn't do any trades this month and your account balance is below 2000 USD, you're gonna pay the $15 for market data as well as a $20 in activity fee. Now, logically, if you had an account over $100,000, you wouldn't be paying any fees at all. So you can see how IB is definitely catering to higher net worth individuals. Now, if you scroll down the page a little bit, you're going to see fees that are associated with other types of accounts and how the fees can change depending on if it's a joint account, if it's an advisor account, brokers, etc. You can always refer to the website if you need to see that stuff. We're gonna go ahead and look at some of the other fees they have. I'm not gonna talk about each one of these because we can be here all day, but we will talk about trading and cash movements and account maintenance and reporting fees. So let's take a look here. Let's go to trading. And the first thing it tells you is about options. Stock options, there's no fees relating to assigning or exercising an options position. That's one of the great things about IB. Also, there's no fees when IB liquidates a position for you. So if your account falls below margin maintenance, they will send you a notification uh, saying that your account is below maintenance and you're subject to liquidation. If they happen to liquidate a position in your account, 
you actually don't get charged any fees for that. A lot of other brokers do charge liquidation fees. So let's talk about cash movements real quick. So withdrawals. So IB allows one free withdrawal request per month. After the first withdrawal, they'll charge some fees. So for a wire in US dollars, the fee is 10 bucks. And then if you do an ACH or an EFT for Canada, um, it's a dollar after your first withdrawal. You see what I mean? And I will say that the wire transfers with IB have been very, very fast. A convenient thing is that you can use their withdrawal system to move funds to another brokerage, for example. Cash deposits, what this actually refers to is if you actually mail them physical cash. If you read the fine print right here, it says, please be aware that it's against Interact Brokers policy to accept physical currency. You know, that makes sense. They wanna keep it electronic. So let's talk about the kind of accounts that IB offers. Generally, you can have a cash account, which means every purchase you make in that account requires the total cash value of that purchase. Whereas in a margin account, the broker actually allows you more leverage, meaning you don't actually need to put up the entire cash value of a position in order to put on that position. So if you wanted to buy 100 shares in a cash account, you would have to pay 100% of the value of that position. In a margin account, it's subject to the Reg T. It's like a standard model for how brokers allow margin to clients. Generally, the margin for stock trading, usually it's between 50% of the stock value and it can go as low as 25% of the stock value. And again, it's gonna vary from stock to stock. What you can do to check the margin is that in your trading terminal, you just put in a test order. It will essentially tell you how much cash is actually being affected when you put on that position. So the first thing you gotta know is that when you're trading in a margin account every single stock purchase or sale will be under margin so if you make a purchase of stock even if you have the account value required to make the entire purchase of stock you're still going to be subject to paying some interest on that position the point of a margin account is that you're using less capital to put on the same position. Just take a look at this trade and you'll get an example for what happens in a margin account. I put in an order to buy 500 shares of SPY. The dollar amount value of these shares is $182,000. In a margin account, you're not required to have $182,000 in order to buy these shares. So if you look on the right side of this order panel, you can basically see that this is the equity in the account right now. So equity is 97,000. The initial margin, this is where it gets important. The dollar amount required in your account to put on this position is 54,695. That being said, if your account drops below the maintenance margin, in this case, 54,695, then your account will be subject to liquidation and IB will inform you of that and then they will probably liquidate the position unless you tell them that you're either depositing more funds or you're going to close the position yourself. So that's sort of the way margin works. So if you wanna see another example of that, you just go to your account window in TWS. This is a demo account. You can see here, this is the cash balance in the account currently. And then you can see the buying power is much higher because this is a margin account. So this buying power is calculated based on the Reg T margin model. All right, guys, so are you still with me? If you made it this far, congratulations. And don't forget to leave a like on the video. So let's move on. Let's talk about portfolio margin. A portfolio margin account allows you more leverage when it comes to putting on positions of derivatives in the same asset. All right, so just skimming through this right here, you're going to see right here, this is very important. So one of the main goals of portfolio margin is to reflect the lower risk inherent in a balanced portfolio of hedged positions. Conversely, portfolio margin must assess proportionately larger margin for accounts with positions which represent a concentration in a relatively small number of stocks. So basically what this means, if you have a position on and then you go ahead and hedge your position, your margin is going to be a lot lower to put on those hedge Edges. For example, if you're long on some stock and you need to go ahead and sell some calls, the margin requirement to sell those calls is going to be a lot lower than if it was in a Reg T margin account. And again, it's based on the overall risk of your portfolio. So if you have an account that your risk is concentrated in a small number of assets, for example, you're speculating on one or two stocks, in that case, your margin is going to be pretty much the same as a regular margin account, and it could actually be even higher. It's a model based on overall portfolio risk, if you get what I mean. If you want to know more, just go ahead and spend some time reading this. Uh, to be eligible for for portfolio margin account, the account balance has to be at least 110,000 US dollars. And of course, if it drops below that, you're at risk of going back to a regular margin account. So that's gonna be the borderline for that. All right, let's move on. All right, let's spend a bit of time talking about interest rates and margin interest rates. So basically in a margin account, every purchase of stock you make will be subject to a margin loan. 
That's just how a margin account works. So let's assume you put on a position worth $100,000, which means you buy $100,000 worth of stock and the margin for that stock is 50%. So the broker is requiring you to maintain a margin of 50,000 in the account. And the other 50,000 is essentially a loan by the broker. You as a client pay interest on that $50,000 loan. Referring to their margin loans, you can see that any loan under $100,000 is charged at this rate right here, which is 1.59%, which is the benchmark plus 1.5%. Benchmark is calculated based on more complicated things. What you need to be concerned with is the rate that the broker is charging you. In this case, you'd be charged 1.59% per year on that $50,000. And as you can see here, as the loans get higher, you pay less and less interest on that. As soon as the margin loans cross a million dollars, you're paying three quarters of a percent and it doesn't go lower than that. All right, moving on, let's talk about interest rates for cash balances. This is a normal thing that you can actually get paid to have cash in your account. At this current time, December 11th, 2020, you can see that they are not paying any interest on cash. You can go onto this page right here and look at the interest rates and also the reference benchmark rates and essentially they're not paying any interest on this and you can see how they calculate it as well cash over ten thousand dollars it would be benchmark minus half a percent in the current state that we're in they're paying zero let's talk about this stock yield enhancement program this is actually quite interesting so let's say you have a long-term portfolio of stocks you can actually apply to this thing and what it essentially does you're allowing interactive brokers to lend out your shares to traders and speculators that are looking to short the stock and basically you get paid an interest on that when you short a stock there's a borrow fee associated with that so if you hold a short position you're going to be subject to a yearly interest rate so if you're the shareholder of these stocks and you're allowing ib to lend out your shares you're essentially going to be paid that borrow fee the benefits is that it's simple you don't have to do anything other than apply and it's basically just free supplementary income into your account. We'll talk really quickly about Canadian registered accounts. Customers with an RSP account will be responsible for an additional $12.50 quarterly fee on top of a regular fee charged for non-RSP account. So the regular fees apply as well as an additional $12.50 quarterly fee. In regards to TFSA, there's no additional fee. Don't forget that if you do plan to open any of these accounts, you need to reference all of these details to see exactly what it is you can and can't do in these accounts. Very important, okay? All right, guys, so in regards to market data, I do have another YouTube video that talks about market data with IB, but the general thing you gotta remember is that you need $2,000 US in the account to even put on a market data subscription, and then basically you need to maintain 500 bucks every month in the account, or your data gets canceled and you need to go ahead and deposit 2000 again to reactivate it. In regards to their trading costs, they're probably some of the lowest in the industry. For Canadians, it's a no-brainer. You can also put on trades with their web platform, which is actually becoming quite user-friendly. At the end of the day, it's going to depend on what you require from the broker. So IB is one of the best for options trading in terms of order execution, order routing, that kind of stuff. So you know, you're not gonna run into problems where you get a bad fill on an order. If you put in an order and it trades at your price, you're gonna fill, you're gonna pay low cost commissions. You know, you can even receive rebates for providing liquidity to the market. That's a good thing about IB. It allows you direct routing to all of the major exchanges. So for example, I pull up this option here. All it's gonna take for me at this point to buy it or sell it is to press a button. All right, so to sum up the video, guys, IB is one of the biggest brokers in the world for retail clients as well as institutions to some degree. They really shine when it comes to options trading. And you can tell that this broker caters more to people with higher net worth. However, you can get away with trading an IB account if you have a lower net worth. You just have to deal with the annoying $2,000 thing for market data, and that's it. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video, I have got plenty of other videos on the channel talking in detail about this platform, so feel free to check those out, and I will catch you guys in the next video. All the best, take care.